Brian Lenskis from the Low Carb MD podcast, and I'm here at Low Carb Denver with Dr. Brian Ansu. Hi, how do you doing, Brian? Uh, welcome, you welcome, very good. good. Thanks for joining me. This is exciting stuff. I get asked all the time as a primary about a good neurologist who understands low carb. So tell people about what you're doing. Well, my, my history goes back into the late late 80s or late 90s when I was doing my residency in neurology and we were treating epilepsy children and these epileptic children were had refractory epilepsy that we were using the ketogenic diet with and I seen just treating those patients not only did it help their epilepsy but also they weight, lost weight so at that time I was overweight so I started to utilize the ketogenic diet low carb diet for myself and over that time, I've lost you know about 30 pounds, and I've maintained it and maintained this type of uh, lifestyle. Wow, that's great! And what kind of experience are you having with patients? Well, you know, what I've seen over the past 20 years of practicing neurology is just the the significant increase in Parkinson's disease and also Alzheimer's. And as they noted back in 2008, Alzheimer's is type 3 diabetes. And when we look at the ketogenic diet and what we're learning here at the low carb um, uh, conference is insulin resistance. And insulin resistance in Alzheimer's disease is significant. So when we look at the basics of the structure of the brain as being about 40 to 30% fat, and everybody over the past 50 years have been on a low fat diet, we need to change that. We have a high carbohydrate, high energy diet in the United States now, and it's just completely ruining our health. And do you see a correlation between diabetes, obesity, and these disease processes that you're seeing? Absolutely. You know, we, we see this all the time, and it starts out when we see uh, a group of aged patients, they come in, they're a little bit overweight, as we see that progress over time, we see them start to have blood pressure problems, we start to see them having sugar problems, and the current medical uh, algorithm of treating these patients is not to um, change the way that they eat, but just to add different medications without altering their lifestyle. And that's a huge problem. We see the same thing. We're trying to treat diabetes and, and other disease processes. But what was shocking to me is I had never really um, heard about the, the mental, you know, mental disorders. You know, I don't know if you know Chris Palmer. He's treating schizophrenia uh, with a ketogenic diet because he was making the, the jump of saying, if we're using these same medications that we use for seizure disorder for, for uh, schizophrenia, why not try a ketogenic diet that we use for seizure disorder and see the outcomes. The, 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 the side effects have been weight loss. Uh, decreased uh, uh, symptoms and he's publishing now and it's pretty amazing. Yes, abs absolutely it is. Uh, when we look at we're, we're coming on to almost a hundred years of the ketogenic diet being used in epilepsy and, and pretty much it was used fairly exclusively as the treatment of epilepsy until about 1938 when they invented Dilantin for the first time. And at that time then everybody used medication. But when you really look at the history of the ketogenic diet and the treatment of ep epilepsy, the um, response that they had in the patients with epilepsy was phenomenal. Now we're starting to see that actually a high uh, fat, low-carb diet can actually improve the patients with uh, Alzheimer's disease. So why do you think it isn't used in adults as frequently? Well, I think it's a little bit uh, more uh, difficult because when you look back to 1930, there wasn't a fast food restaurant in every corner. Uh, we looked at the grocery stores back in 1930, uh, there was no processed food. So I think that it's a clinical challenge for uh, a patient to take the effort to make this diet rather than just pull a box off the shelf and throw it in the microwave or, or add some uh, uh, water to it. How do you find compliance with patients? Do you, do you find, because that's always been the argument, it's too hard to do for patients, they won't do it. Well, that is definitely an issue, uh, especially you know in the practice, like where I practice in neurology, a lot of my Alzheimer's or demented patients or, or patients that come in with memory disturbances actually are in the moderate to more severe stages rather than somebody that is relatively healthy that just want to change their lifestyle. And that's where it makes it very difficult uh, to uh, go forward with that. 
And one question I have is, is exogenous ketones. I'm not a big fan, but do you think in the setting of a senior who doesn't want to change their diet or is unable to because of living conditions, is there any role or have you seen any benefit or heard any benefit from using exogenous ketones in that situation? Uh, yes, uh, I, I think that is good. A couple of years ago, there was a uh, pharmaceutical company that made a medical food, and I can't recall the name of it, but it was exogenous ketones. And I think it is beneficial to a certain extent. Granted, natural ketones produced by the body uh, would be the optimal, but I think for those uh, patients that have that difficulty, then I think it would be good uh, to utilize those. That's great, and I think, you know, I'm seeing a lot w with regard to um, uh, mental, uh, mental illness. Uh, uh, a lot. How about peripheral neuropathy? Do you have any experience, or have you seen any benefits with with a ketogenic diet? Uh, yes, I have. We we see a lot of peripheral neuropathy, migraine headaches, fibromyalgia, and you know these patients typically are a little bit easier to do because they're more active. Um, so if they can get on the ketogenic diet, uh, granted it takes time. They they may have to be supplemented with other supplements in addition to the ketogenic diet, but yeah, we do see some good benefits from that also. Well, and that's interesting you brought up fibromyalgia because that's always been a wastebasket term. We just say there's something when they're anxious or depressed or something and they have fibromyalgia, but now there's studies uh, and actually practice of using metformin uh, with benefit, you know, and it's, that's a diabetes medication, but it's lowering insulin levels. And so what you're talking through, through diet makes sense from that standpoint. Yes, you know, we, I probably used uh, the ketogenic diet in my practice for m more migraines than, than any other condition. And I, I've seen so many patients come into me with their migraines saying how it helped their migraines, but what they forgot to tell me is how bad their migraine or how bad their fibromyalgia was, which is now gone. How do, we, how do we reach more neurologists to understand this? Because it's so important because so many of these, these conditions can, can uh, benefit. And, and the neurologists I work with, none of them have any clue about it. Well, you know, that's a big issue with me. Being a neurologist, dealing with fam, uh, primary care that refer patients to me, um, it is time consuming. And trying to, to instruct the patient of dietary changes is, is a massive effort. But I've had patients that, you know, I've treated for one ailment or the other, and, you know, as a side effect of the ketogenic diet, their diabetes has been cured. And they go back to their family doctor, and their family doctor says, well, that's great, just keep what you're doing. But the physician doesn't ask the patient, well, what are you doing to give you this benefit? And that's one thing I learned, you know, doing this kind of medicine, is I was treating obesity, diabetes, those, and hypertension. But they're coming back saying, hey, my migraines are better, my mood is better, my depression's better, you know, I'm not as anxious, PTSD going away. And it was shocking to me because I had no idea. There was a side effect of my treatment for metabolic disease. Yeah, it's, it's really amazing once the patient uh, starts to utilize this. And, and granted, the first month is the toughest time. But once you get on there and your carb um, uh, cravings to, decrease, yeah. then it, it's pretty much smooth sailing. You know, I can drive by a, a fast food restaurant or, or something like that without even, you know, a blink of an eye. Yeah. So where are you located if people want to find you? I'm located in Moline, Illinois. It's uh, headquarters for John Deere. We're, we're farming oh, yeah. community, so uh, we're surrounded by high carbohydrate corn. So uh, trying to get the patients and uh, that to realize not only is the carbohydrates bad for them, it's also bad for the, the meat that they eat. So we, we try to do grass fed and recommend that highly. Wow. Brian, thanks for joining me. This is really incredible. It really is because I'm at conferences a lot and people always ask me about a good neurologist who understands this and I generally say I don't know any. So now I can say I know someone. Yeah, well, I appreciate absolutely. it, Brian. Yes. And hopefully we can network some of the neurologists out there uh, together. And if there's other people out there doing this kind of medicine, I think it's critical. It really yeah, is critical. I, I think when they you know, start looking on and find the information that's presented here at a conference like this, I mean, you have to realize that this is facts. It, it's, it's nothing wrong. We, we see so many so much misinformation out there about the ketogenic diet. Oh, great. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Thanks.